everybody, it's Cindy the Scrapologist. It's yard sale season here in New England. Yay, hopefully wherever you are, there's a yard sale season too. And um, I got some great bargains this weekend and I just wanted to share them with you. The reason I like to share them is because I just want to give you some ideas of things to look for when you're out antiquing or yard sailing or whatever. Um, because you really don't have to spend a lot of money to make crafts. I used to get sucked into the whole marketing thing back in the 80s when I started I started in card making and I thought I had to have every stamp that I loved that I saw. I had to have every embossing powder, every stamp pad, every you name it. And then I started getting into scrapbooking and I thought, "Oh, I've got to have that gadget and this gadget." But I quickly learned, "No, I didn't need those items. I have a few select more expensive things in in my shop. I think the this um, in my studio. Sorry, in the silly silhouette cameo. Definitely, I ended up having to buy because I get a lot of of requests for custom orders, and somebody wants their name put on the front of the album or their journal. And uh, so I I had to invest in one of those. I do have a um, vintage vintage big kick which is my die cutting machine. Um, I have a book press. One of these days I am going to show you my studio when it's clean. <laughs> but I can't ever get a, a moment's rest where I don't have projects, orders that I'm making spread out all over the place. Um, my book press I got uh, for my anniversary. My husband got that for me. And I have a, um, I call it the purple monster. It's a, it makes um, holes for for grommets and brads and things like that. But other than that, I don't have a lot of expensive things. I don't want to be having to sell my journals and albums for $300 a piece. So this is just to give you an idea of some things that you can look for when you're out and about yard sailing. So the first thing I want to show you is I was so super, super excited to find a new I don't even know if I'd call it an antique store um, called Pickers Paradise near us. Apparently the American Pickers picked him and it's a cool place because it is huge but the guy doesn't have any electricity. <laughs> so when you walk in he gives you a flashlight and so it's really kind of hard to pick with a flashlight in your hand. Next time I'm going to look like a total dork but I'm going to go in with my hiking um, flashlight, you know, the kind that you wear on your forehead. I'm really going to do that, you guys, <laughs> so that I can have two hands to pick. But the thing that I was super excited about, and I totally want to go back, is um, upstairs he had a special. Anything you can fit in this bag for two bucks. And so I went to the fabric and sewing section, and I stuffed this bag full of goodies. I found so much stuff. The first thing that I found was this bag, but it was completely, it almost took up that whole bag, completely full of vintage thread and 99% of it is on the old wooden spools. So forget about the thread, just the spools themselves um, were just were just a find for me because I have ideas of what I want to do with the the spools too. So I got this humongous gallon Ziploc bag full of antique vintage wooden spools. Well, vintage I should say, probably not antique. And I did find some fabrics. Let me move this out of the way. The first thing I found was this. I don't even really know what this was. It's just a long, maybe a curtain trim or something, but look how pretty it is. And I've already used a bunch of it because what I've done is I've started cutting this. This is super starchy. It's It would be really nice, I figured it would be really nice to embroider on. So I've been cutting this off and using this separately. And with this, I've been making these. I really like the Victorian brooches that, um, brooches, sorry, my mother keeps correcting me on that. It's spelled B-R-O-O-C-H, but it's pronounced brooch. <laughs> Um, so I've been making these and what I've been doing 
is cutting a piece of this off and then sewing on a piece of trim and some other textiles. Let's see if I can get them to focus better. I folded it over and put some trim up here. These aren't done. I'm planning on putting something here. I might embroider a heart. I might, um, this Tim Holtz piece of ephemera would look really nice sewn on. So I am making a bunch of those out of this. I've made 10 so far. Um, I made 10 because I might put one of these into each of my ephemera packs that I'm uh, making for my shop and they are just going to look lovely on a scrapbook page or as a tuck spot. So I'm making those and then with this section so far all I've been doing is cutting squares but the pattern on it look how beautiful the patterns the pattern is just so pretty and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these yet but when I first saw this I just knew I liked this and I knew I liked this it, both of these elements just really spoke to me made me happy to see them I didn't know what I was going to do with them yet so you don't have to have an idea right when you're at the store pressure yourself into saying oh I know exactly what I'm going to do with this it might sit for a while before it speaks to you and you come up with something but this was one of my favorite things and this was in that two two dollar bag that I shoved in I also found oh just another little vintage I think this was a table runner at some point what a beautiful I mean this is already a journal cover practically made already for me I'd probably trim it down a little bit got that I also got some other just fabrics this yeah I'm not super super excited about it but you know I wanted to stuff my bag as full as possible and oh this is a different hold on and I and I stuffed all of this in there this is vintage linen and I tried to find anything it's stained that's okay with me I thought I like to find things that are hand embroidered so pretty you can cut it out and look at how beautiful this is look at that so gorgeous and I found a bunch of this fabric I thought this was very elegant and not not too busy so I'm definitely gonna put this in a journal actually I'm making two more of these journals that I made using Amity Bloom's tutorial and one of the pages where well, you use a lot of fabric in it and one of the pages is a fabric page and I think that this is going to end up as in my next book as a fabric page how gorgeous does that look with all the vintage elements in it but I have a lot of this so like I said I just tried to cram everything I could into that two dollar bag and I'm going back with my head's headlight <laughs> and then I made then I found one more my mother said some of this is Pennsylvania Dutch work which is really cool because my dad is from that area and his family was Pennsylvania Dutch so I liked I liked finding things too that were kind of I didn't know it at the time maybe that's why it spoke to me oh yeah now I see there's the Pennsylvania Dutch pattern how cool but you can use every one of these strips kind of use them as bands you can cut it up in different different shapes and maybe this would be another beautiful scrapbook page on here if I took if I took a whole section of this and had three or four stripes on here that would look gorgeous too so I had some other things crammed into that two dollar bag but what a bargain huh there was some old clothing up there too but I um, I just had to stop because I had to go to the bathroom <laughs> we'd been in the car for hours and of course since he doesn't have electricity of course he didn't have plumbing so I said well I think it's time to go hit the road we'll come back <laughs> too much information I know 
<laughs> but I think you guys can relate. Um, then I went to an antique store and this guy was throwing out a box of um, stuff, a big giant garbage bags of vintage clothing that had all gotten wet. And he just, he literally, he was so nice, he literally took the bag and I said, I'll pick through it. Okay, I have no pride. And because um, nobody had looked in there. He just pulled it out of somebody's estate. He cleans out houses, you know. I said, I'll look in there. Unfortunately, most of it was still wet and, oh, it stunk so bad. And it was not used. I mean, I probably could have taken it home and washed it, but it just didn't seem worth it. But what I did find was I was able to salvage was this. Let me find a piece that's not so ruined. I don't know what this is. It almost looks like this would go down like the front of a of a lady's shirt, dress shirt. But let me get it up close in the camera. Maybe you can tell me what this is. And they're all they're all cut the same size. So I don't really know. I don't know what they were used for. See how beautiful. So I have so many elements here I can use. Here is one piece of trim that I could cut off and use. I can use this center piece. Do I have this upside down? No. I could use this center strip. And then this piece right here has either one or two pieces, depending on what I wanted to do with it. And I got a whole bunch of them. He did charge me a buck, though. I said, hey, you were going to throw it out. And he was going to charge me $5. I said, no, you were going to throw this out. I'll give you a buck. And I'll help you clean up the mess off of your floor. Oh, I just noticed these are numbered, too. There's 11, 14, 10. I don't know. I do not know what these were for, but I will definitely use them. Then today, we had in our area, okay, this is crooked, driving me crazy. We had um, a mega yard sale. It was at the fairgrounds, so you can imagine how big it was. And the nice thing is it benefited the either the Humane Society or um, the Refuge League. One, uh, it benefited animals that need adoption. So you only pay a buck to get in, and all of the vendors who pay for tables, though, that money goes towards the animal shelter. So um, And there were hundreds of people there. There wasn't a lot of good stuff, but it was a beautiful day. I took my parents, my husband, we all went, and then we had lunch afterwards, just strolling around the fairgrounds in the grass. You know, it was really nice, but I did find a, a few things. The first thing I found was a vintage book. This is called Howitz Stories, and it's from the New York State Library. That's kind of embossed on the cover there. See that? And it's, uh, it's from the 1800s. It's got the beautiful writing. And it's not really all that interesting. But what I love about it is it's loaded with, and it still has the tissue paper protecting uh, the, the artwork. And these are from engravings. And it's loaded with pictures of these beautiful vintage women. So this is Ludmilla. And look at the patina on the page. So gorgeous. This is Kitty. Look at her teeny weeny waist. And I'll just show one more. I loved this one. I thought she looked... Oh, this isn't the one. There was one that she just looked so bohemian. I really liked it. No, I can't find it, but... Yeah, anyway. And as soon as I saw this, I thought, kit, digital kit. I'm going to scan in these images play around with them and make a digital kit of the, the images of these beautiful, elegant Victorian ladies. And that'll be, that'll be a little kit that I'll put out there. 
So that was a good find. Then I found some fabric. So when I go to these places, this is another hint for you. They can be overwhelming. Think before you go. Think about what you need. So when I go, I, I know that I'm looking for vintage fabrics, craft supply, and craft supplies and old books. So I just kind of scan as I go by, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> using my scanner, my crafty scanner, and I don't get overwhelmed that way. I would like to stop and look at every single thing in every booth, but I'm there on a mission. I'm there to walk, enjoy myself, enjoy my family, and also, but also to get get some beautiful supplies that I can use. So I try not to get distracted by by anything. Oh, and my mother got a Vitamix from the 1970s. Of course, those things last forever for 20 bucks. She was on the fence about whether to buy it. I said, "Mom, it might it's a Vitamix for 20 bucks. It might not even be there when we get back." So, when we get back to the table. So, there's nothing to think about. You need to buy it. So, she's probably over there playing with that. Hi, Mom. Oh, this isn't a cut. This is from the fairgrounds in case I wanted to leave and come back in. By the way, I didn't want you to think that. <laughs> now this is a cut. My kitty. Poor Ginger. She's getting old now. And she was rubbing up against me up at shoulder height and she fell. She's been doing that a lot lately, losing her balance. And of course she went to catch herself on me and whoosh, she sliced down my arm and her claw ended up in my belly. Whoosh, a puncture mark on my belly. <laughs> Uh, but um, I went to one booth. Okay, so the book, this was all at the same booth. The book and these two packs and this were all 10 bucks. I essentially, she essentially threw this in for free. So good deal. Really, really good deal. I found some vintage trim that I can use. Looks like maybe it was cut off of a pillowcase or something. Oh, look, and it's that same pattern on here it's the same kind of thing as on here interesting right here so you guys need to tell me what this is please I know somebody out there is gonna know and oh I didn't realize that was round but I can totally cut that up and use it Beautiful handwork. I have two of these. Oh, I have two of these. And then just a pretty, two pr pretty, pretty elegant handkerchiefs with, with lace on the edges. So because I bought several things, they threw this in for free. Because I said, hey, would you take, it came to 12, and I said, would you throw, just take it 10 bucks for the whole thing? Sure. And that's the other thing. Dicker with them, but don't be insulting, of course. I try not to be, but dicker with them. Sometimes they just don't want to take it home. And then I and then there I got two packs. These were three dollars a piece of tablecloths and um, placemats. And it does say, look at how beautiful. It does say handmade on one of the labels. And the stitching, the stitch work is, I mean, I wish I could sew like that. Look how dainty those stitches are around here, the embroidery. <gasps> and then this, just beautiful. And then all of this is hand stitched. And these have never been used. They might not even be vintage, but you know what? That's okay. I used to be, until recently actually, I was all about vintage. No, nope, I'm only having things from the 1800s in my junk journals. That's it. And then I sort of branched out from there when I started getting interested in textiles. And I still probably don't use anything brand new, but now I've sort of gone over into handmade. If it's handmade, I don't care when it was made. It was it's handmade and somebody put love and effort into it and Let's use it and love it back. So not everything has to be vintage. And these might be for all I know. I just don't know. Okay, so that was all 10 bucks. And then, look, Tim Holtz. Of course, when you see Tim Holtz, you go, Reep! 
you stop, you put on the brakes. So she had a whole huge bin of, um, well, the whole, the, her whole booth was crafting supplies, and she had a whole bin of Sizzix dies, three bucks each. And you know how much these are in the store. So I got four of them. So 12 bucks for these. And I kind of cut them out. So I got this one that does, it cuts an ATC card. And then the little photo corners, you get four of these. So I got that one. And I got this really pretty, it's called a distressed distressed doily that's really kind of cool it's a little more ornate than I'll probably use very much but for three bucks I thought yeah I'll use it and then where's my other one I had two others to show you if I cut them out oh here's one <coughs> excuse me then this one I didn't cut it in two colors but I should have but that cuts these two pieces and this it would be a really nice tag topper it's a little wide for most of the junk journals I make but they can also be trimmed down so I got that one and lastly I got file folder tabs these I can cut myself I can make these myself but you know what if I want to just sit there and make a bunch of them and then have them in my stash it's going to be easier to have a die for that and then lastly I got a Tim Holtz embossing folder it's this one very vintage looking and I cut this one out and then what I like to do is take my my uh, vintage photo and do this and I would probably if I had it nearby I would probably do these these numbers down here in a different color maybe um, I have a really nice burgundy but that's kind of a cool it's almost like um, ledger paper and different numbers it's a cool collage so 13 bucks for all that plus lunch that makes it you know that makes it a little more expensive <laughs> but um, it was a nice day it was a nice weekend so yeah so I just wanted to share that with you I wanted to climb on and do a video or jump on I should say and do a do a video I'm heading out of town for a couple of days and probably won't be able to be in my sh well I won't be able to be in my shop and so I just wanted to at least say a quick hello to you all. I hope that it, during yard sale season you find some goodies. I would love to hear what you're finding. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.